In this third lesson, we're going to be discussing how to solve and graph inequalities. Now, I wanted to remind you of two things that you've learned before about inequalities and solving them. First, undo what's been done. That was a rule that we've been using to solve equations, and we'll continue to use that to solve inequalities as well. And then a special rule. If you multiply or divide by a negative, switch your inequality sign. Remember, multiplying or dividing by a negative makes the entire problem opposite. So we want to make sure that we switch our sign to be its opposite as well. Let's go ahead and look at two different examples. Our first example, 2x plus 4 is greater than 12. I'm going to go ahead and undo what's being done. I have a minus 4 on one side and a minus 4 on the other. I'm going to end up with 2x is greater than 8. Now I'm going to go ahead and divide by 2 on both sides. I'll be dividing by 2 and I get x is greater than 4. Now we'll come back to graphing that here momentarily. The second example that I'd like to show you is an example that says negative 3x minus 7 is greater than or equal to negative 22. Similar to the first one, I'm going to undo the addition. In this case, I'm going to undo the subtraction by doing plus 7 to both sides. I'm going to get negative 3x is greater than or equal to, in this case, I have a negative 15. Now, here's where this sign switch comes into play. Look what I have to do here. I'm going to have to divide both sides by negative 3. And as soon as that happens, I have to switch this sign around. Notice how it's pointing in the different direction now. It was greater than or equal to. Now it's less than or equal to. I have an x, I have a 5, and I should have a correct answer. Now to wrap this up, I'm going to switch colors and show you what it looks like to graph these inequalities. Typically, I'm going to set up a number line. I'll do one for both problems. I like to put the number that's being referenced right in the dead center. I usually do two numbers to the left in decreasing amounts. And two numbers to the right in increasing amounts. Now in this case, I have an open circle at 4 because my values are greater than 4 but not equal to and I want the values that are bigger than 4. So values like 5 and 6 and beyond, including all of these 4 and a halfs and 5 and a halfs. All of these things are going to be greater than 4. So I'm going to shade in the direction that is greater than 4. And on the other problem, I have x is less than or equal to 5. So in this case, I want to have a circle at 5. But because it's equal to, I'm going to shade in my 5. And now I want the values that are less than 5 like a 4, a 3, or beyond if we needed to. So I'll be shading in a darkened arrow to the left. Now, can you check these problems? You can. The check is a little bit more involved, and typically there's three or four steps involved, where oftentimes you'll check something that's to the left of the circle. In this case, if we checked a 2 or a 3 in our original inequality, we would not want it to work because it's not shaded. We would typically check the 4, and in this case, because 4 is not part of the solution, that's why it's an open circle, we would want the 4 to also not work. And then we would check something from the shaded region, like a 5 or a 6 or a 10 or anything bigger than 4, and we would plug that in and we would want it to work. Likewise, over here, I could check a 3 or a 4. That should make the inequality true. I would check the 5. That should also make the inequality true. And I could check a 6 or a 7 or anything beyond, and it should make the inequality false. We may do these in class, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to exclude that step from our work.